Come on, autofocus. We're like out of focus. There we go. All right. This is a 1990 Evinrude 40 horsepower. I've got the video about the lower unit and carburetors and electronics already. In this video, I will be adding power trim and tilt to this engine. So I had already removed the touch trim system or the original up down system in this thing in order to get the engine up to get the lower unit off. So that's kind of already done. I will show you that footage, but eh, the, the steps and the order I took on this one was a little out of order. But you'll get the uh, you'll get the gist of it. So let's go ahead and uh, tilt this motor up. Okay, slight problem. The uh, touch trim unit it's done for. It ain't moving. Uh, chances are the unit's fine. It's probably the cable. It's uh, stretching and not working very well. Usually that's the case. So there's no way to lift the motor up. So we need to remove the. Uh, Trim pins, they call it. There's two three quarter inch wrenches right here. So I'm get a mallet and tap it out a little. Well, that ain't moving. I have the uh, chain hooked up to a J hook here, and then I got some PB blaster and screw it around there and hope it does something. Well, hopefully this isn't a uh, view of what's to come on this motor. Because this rod looks like it's never been out of there, and it is stuck. I mean, that thing isn't moving at all. It is in there. Alright, so... Plan B it here. So my now plan is to tighten this rod down. So much that it just kind of uh, breaks its rust seal free. I don't know if it's going to work, but it's better than getting out the torch and getting it hot. But now the plan, be it not a good one, is to use the tightness of this rod to break it loose. And it's spinning not at all on the other side. Good. Reds are probably stripped now. So the way this works. This bolt doesn't run all the way through, alright, well, this bolt runs all the way through here, but it doesn't contact with the outside edges of the uh, unit here. It has two plastic bushings that go on each side. Each plastic, plastic bushing is pretty thick, so it doesn't actually make any contact to metal to metal inside of here unless the bushings are gone. Let's hope that's not the case. So the only way this thing is really going to seize on here like this is if it's only seized in on the ends. That we can work with. If this was all rested and seized, forget about it. So we're going to uh, unseize that now. All right. Can't tell yet, but I uh, fired up the old cutting torch. We're going to get this thing nice and hot. And hope that fixes it. Now, I hate doing this. I'm going to ruin the paint. That's so good. That's barely on its way out, but it moved. So hooray. Still had a long way to go though, that's the problem. Once it's out of the other side, I'll only have to deal with half of it, so I suppose it's got that going for it. 
Also, I could tap it back and forth a couple of times. <sighs> All right, hold on. It's air hammer time. Do -do -do -do. I think I just lost a bunch of footage. I use a cell phone for this and it overheats if you leave it on for too long. I don't know why, it's stupid, but whatever. So basically what I did was I cut the end of the bolt off because it was mushroomed. I used a uh, 3 8 inch extension, got it about halfway there. Now, this one will go all the way through, but I didn't want to go with this one because I don't want to ruin this one, I use it all the time. At least like some stuff. Well, that's out. Now, up inside of here is the pin that attaches the top of this ram to the lower unit. Hopefully that doesn't give me any problems. Maybe because it doesn't usually, shouldn't see water, it won't. Well, that's all I did to get that pin out of there. Now, it'll hammer through and come out the other side. Um, I do need to go up a little bit more in the motor. And should give us enough room to pop it out of there. Now, unlike on bigger motors, I can't just go into the side here. I kind of got to go at an angle, so it's kind of dumb. But let's hope it just comes out, because that'd be nice. <laughs> All right, how am I getting that out of there? Let's get this cable out of here. Yeah, that didn't work. This is a ground strap, by the way. If it doesn't come off. Well, I was gonna say if it doesn't come off, I have no problem cutting it off. But that works. So pretty, pretty good corrosion going on with that little bolt. Good to know. Now let's uh, get some big pliers and get this thing off. By the way, when I moved this, it gave more slack on the cable, and this thing goes in and out now with no issue. So that's kind of funny. Now, just trying to get the cable off. I don't want to take a torch at the top or on this cable because they are rather expensive. I don't know, a hundred bucks, so not horrible, I suppose. But I'd like to meet the engineer that came up with this idea. All right, I uh, just so you know, I disconnected the cable up at the tiller handle, which gives you enough room. That pulls off, and you get the whole stupid cable assembly out. Now, before this goes back together, threads of this need to get cleaned up. And also, it's uh, broken. So, in this case, I probably didn't actually have to pull it all apart. But I did. So, whatever. Okay, cable's out. Let's put our screw back in before I screw something up. Wow, there's very little adjustment there. Between not turning and loose. That's probably good. Alright, cable is free from the little home, which means I can take a torch to it now. But it is getting late. Well, here it is day two. 
still trying to get this thing out of here. Um, sleeping on it was probably a good idea because uh, I realized hammering it out from the backside may not be the best option. I then put a socket over the pin with a C-clamp so it forces it out on the other side, hoping that would work. Also, it's been soaking in BB Blaster and it's, it's made no improvement, so it's stuck. So I'm going to pull the C-clamp off, pull the socket out, grab the old torch, heat it up again, and uh, just keep trying it. Eventually, it's got to come out. Now again, we got bushings, so chances are the only part seized is right where the uh, pin runs through the aluminum. So I'm going to do like the last couple, keep the pin up, and hope it does something. Well, it's uh, still a little warm. Let's uh, try the old C clamp. See if it does anything. I'm using a uh, little pipe on it for a little more leverage. Which is generally not a good idea because since you said you bend your pipe clamp, what are you going to do, you know? Doesn't look like it's moving. Like it's moving at all, actually. So, so this is a power trim and tilt I picked up off eBay. It's actually the entire, as you can see, the entire stern transom section. So, the reason I wanted this was because it came with any other parts I may or may not need, mainly the tilt pin, the bushings and the top pin up here. Also comes with a uh, spare tilt tube in case there's something wrong with mine, any hardware issues. So all in all, this seemed like the way to go. I would also like to uh, thank the eBay seller for putting up with my uh, ridiculously low uh, offers until finally accepting one, so I appreciate it. So, let's, uh, well I have it rigged up to my uh, switch or the controller on my bench. I will go into the connections of that later, but let me show you that works. So the first thing I want to do is get the, uh, the trim gauge off, the sender off, get the wiring out of this little hole and through here. Get the grommet off the best I can, hopefully without damaging it. I don't, uh, I'm not going to hold my breath on that one. If you notice, the grommet can't fit over this plug. And I don't even think this plug is going to fit through that hole. The plug was installed after the wiring was ran through there. Let me get this plug off. Might work, might not. Yeah, that doesn't want to come out. I'm not going to sit here and deal with this all day. Where are my dikes? Dagmore. Messing with this plug. There we go. That's how to get that off. Pull the seal off. Get our grommet out of there. Now we'll get the wiring the rest of the way. So there's a little screw right here. It's got to come off. Trim sender. We got two tiny little quarter inch screws. We have this pin right here. It's got to come out. Now, this little hoop goes that way. So, this is actually in the dumbest spot possible. So, 
so I'm just rotating a little here. Now the first uh, clue I have that this is going to come out is the simple fact that that turned. The last one didn't do that. I have the thing supported right here via chain. That way this doesn't come crashing down, which honestly now I think about it, I could have just done that. This is the trail lock. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, so next step, I don't know, it's up for some debate. You could pull the lower pin out to get the unit free and then do the top pin or you can do the top pin. It doesn't matter. Let me show you something. So that's just me pushing it out. So this pin will come right out. But if you don't have that problem, I want to show you something. So in my engine, also, if you notice I said that problem, that's not a problem. That's that's a blessing right there. But anyway, um, if you notice I had to hammer the living poo out of uh, my old pin to get it out. Also, I did mushroom the end, so that hole no longer goes through. So if I needed to reuse this pin, I could just drill a hole through it and call it a day. But, if you notice, no hole right here, but there is a hole right here. I think that's a huge improvement they made. So this is a 93 lower unit. Lower unit. This piece came off a 93 motor. Clean out our hole a little bit there. That was kind of a uh, an addition, which allows this to slide into it. This is a little thread adapter. It is part number 340624. That screws in like so. And then allows us to install our slide hammer. This guy. Into that hole. So. Had my engine have had this, that would have been a lot better. But it didn't. Now, I already had this tool. It came in a uh, part of a tool lot I bought. So I didn't even know I had it until I was browsing the, uh, the tool website trying to identify all the random tools I had. Saw this, realized this one had a hole in it, and tried it out. Look at that. Is that lovely or what? The old pin, it looks identical. We'll find out when we slide it in. The only difference is that uh, hole in the center that's uh, drilled out. Now you could just drill a hole in the center of this one, put a uh, run a tap down it, and get some threads and kind of duplicate this on your own. But I obviously will be using this one. But yeah, so if you have any problems with that stuck, see if you got a hole. If not, drill and tap one. Hopefully, I'll be able to lower this trim motor back down. It's going to be a little hard now that I cut the plug end off. All I'm kind of doing is rigging it to my little controller. If my battery was any closer, or if I was any less lazy, I would just move the battery closer and hook these directly up. But, this will work. And this should be it. Now that it's down, it'll be a little more easier to manage. Okay, now we have two three-quarter inch nuts on either side. They gotta come off. So it's ready to come out. Hopefully we don't have any problems here. Nope, rod's moving just fine. Well, apparently it's a little stronger than I am. A little helper on it. It's rod out. Forgot a ground strap. Nothing new. Let's put it back in. The unit is removed. I'm going to pop these bushings out of here. There we go. So now I'm just going to go wash it down and uh, probably paint it. 
I've been debating whether to leave it white or to paint it, but it'll stick out like a sore thumb if I don't paint it something. Black would have worked too, but I'll just paint it. Uh, I'll just paint the blue. So you wash it down and then paint it, and then, uh, yeah. So, keep in mind, I took a torch to the lower unit here to get it, try to get it seized or unseized. So, my paint on this, not so good anymore. Apparently, uh, heat rating on this paint, well, that actually is pretty good. I literally took a torch to it. Really didn't do much. But I'm going to sand it down, clean it up a little bit. Looking for some uh, 220 grit paper. I was using 180 on that. I'm gonna make it a little smoother, feather edge it out. Found some bombo. So apparently I will be taking care of those little cracks. Alright, I need to mix this stuff up. Well, here it is the next day. The primer is nice and dry, so I'm going to apply some uh, touch-up paint to that. Well, it's a bondo dry. I can start smoothing that out now. So, upon further review, I realized that these holes are a little out around, and there's no way I'm getting a pin inside of there, especially this one. This one I might be able to hammer through, but this one, not going to happen. So I have a half-inch drill bit on my drill. I'm going to try to uh, drill them out and hope that uh, fixes it. Worst case, i got to replace the stern brackets here. I'll lose my transom clamps, but otherwise, not really. The first hole is giving me a little bit of problems, but it's mostly the paint on the, uh, the rod. When it hits that, it kind of gets snagged up. So I'll ream it out a little bit more and sand it down when I'm done painting it, but for the most part, this will work. Now this hole is a 5 8 Should give me less problems in the front, more so in the back. Power trim and tilt unit doesn't look good right now in the photo. You know, let me angle my light a little better. Maybe that'll make it look good. It really is shiny, nice looking, I think, in person. It doesn't really look that good right now. Anyway, so it's uh, I painted it, put some clear on it. it doesn't really feel like it's going to flake off or anything. It came out pretty nice actually. That side anyway. If we uh, 
we look on the bottom, eh. So I have a power trim and tilt harness here. This one is off a, a 91 or a 9270 horse. It's a little different, but we can work with it, so that's good. Um, before I put this in, I want to get these cleaned up a little bit. So I'm going to cut the ends off the wire, make them nice and even. I already did it to this one, obviously, since I got fed up with the plug and just cut it off. So we're going to strip the wires back, just like so quarter inch maybe. So one of the things I like about power trim and tilt wiring is how universal it is. All it is is two wires that connect there and the rest is just switches and mounting and all that stuff. So this is going to be pretty easy to make this work. Um, off of our sender we have one wire here but our configuration is a little different over here because if we put this one white wire in then we have this plug and this contraption not going anywhere. What a 40 horsepower should have, it shouldn't use this ground wire right here to run into here. What it has is a ground wire that runs through this loom back and then connects in the ground wires over here. I don't know why they would do that and not just ground out here, but that's what they did. Especially since this grounds the inside of the motor anyway, so they could just tap into that ground. I don't know what they were doing. But no biggie. You need to extract the pins using our uh, pin extractor tool. Hopefully you can see the part number. So we'll force our pins out. That's kind of what we're left with. Now, the easiest way to do this would be to cut the ground wire off here, and then there is our new ground half. But I'm just going to make up a new little end, make it look a little better. And also this is about ready to fall off, so I'm going to cut that off and put a new end on that. Just like so. Now I'm going to get my crimpers. Okay, I have a new terminal and my crimpers. So I got two new terminals here. These are for the motor. Now, I have these because of uh, my primary income requires it. I have all kinds of electronical tools. If you don't, I wouldn't recommend going out and trying to buy these. This set I'm using right now is $100. So they get pretty expensive just for a tool to crimp this on. And these terminals, they're, they're pretty strong and pretty beefy, so you, you can't get away with just using some cheap little pair. Kind of unfortunate, but this is kind of how it works. These are actually some of the worst terminals. I really don't like gripping these, but you have to, you know. If you don't need to ruin your ends and cut them off, don't. It ain't always easy. Well... It's pretty much ready to go back into the uh, the engine now. I'll reinstall the bushings. All right, just made this video. Realized I didn't record. So what I need to do is get a round piece of sandpaper, a uh, piece of sandpaper, roll it up, go in here and sand this hole in and out, make sure I'm not gonna have any problems. Problem with that is I'm incredibly lazy, so I did that and then put it into the end of the drill. And put that into my hole. And we have one nice clean hole. So I'll do the same thing to the other holes and uh, get ready to slide that unit in here. Alright, with that cleaned out. This whole setup should slide right back in. And that's kind of where it can sit for now. I'm going to put some uh, anti C's around here and on the other side of the hole, make sure it doesn't get stuck. Alright, I have the unit hooked up to the controller built into my bench. I just kind of plugged into it. So let's operate it up a little bit. 
get it to where it needs to go. I will put in the top pin. Somewhere around there. And the top pin, I went and I painted the bolt head blue. That way it wouldn't be ugly. So I'm sticking my head in that hole, seeing how far off I am. A little more up. Should be getting close. Actually, it's pretty dead on right there. Look at that. Alright. Do some jiggling and some tapping. And that pin should find its way in. Perfect. Look at that. Alright, now the motor is sitting on the trail lock. So lift it up a little bit more. Trail lock disengaged if I can. And you. Now the only real thing left to do is reinstall our pin. Well, there's a lot left to do, but I suppose uh, the next step, I should say, is to install this pin. And that should hold it in for the rest of eternity. So I'm putting the screws in to the back side here. Okay, let's get this grommet back installed. Again, we gotta slip our wiring. Hook it up to my uh, bench. We can do a quick test of it. So I need to get the nut off the tilt tube here so I can install the little part I just lost. This thing. Uh, now this was white a second ago, I painted it blue. But it goes in there and clips on the uh, our little wiring loom here. So this isn't easy necessarily. You need a large socket. This is a one and a quarter inch uh, nut. So the problem with taking this nut off is it's just a tube that runs to the other side and there's the nut on that side. So when I start taking off this nut, if the other side has less resistance, it'll come off leaving this one here. Um, you do have the option of sliding the tilt tube out, putting on our part, and then putting this all back in, but then everything's going to fall apart and we want to do that. So I'm going to uh, put an impact on this side, hold the other side with a wrench, and just kind of hope for the best, really. My plan B. Take off our little cap here. Now this was factory installed because this shouldn't have had a tilt tube through it, but that's got them in there anyway, so they left it in, I guess. So this is the nut that I pulled off of the uh, power trim tilt donor engine part. So I'm going to tighten that down via the impact. Kind of use this as a double nut setup. Again, I don't know if this is going to work, but I, I sure hope. So I want those nuts to stay put while I try to take off the other side. And they're still both coming out. So that sucks. Hey, look at that, it came out. Now it did Yep, came right out. So apparently the double nut did work. Good. 
And here is our tilt tube. Let's slide our little part on. And if you don't need to do this, obviously, you can just zip tie it down somehow and call it a day. But I got the part, so I might as well put it on. All right, I'm gonna hold the other side and tighten it back down and hope it don't slip off again. So the service manual said to torque this to 40 to, excuse me, 45 to 50 foot pounds. Now let's not kid ourselves. That is way more than 40 to 45, whatever, foot pounds. So I need to back that nut off a little bit and I'm gonna use an actual torque wrench to torque that down properly. I don't want any problems with our uh, tilt system here, struggling or not being able to lift because it wasn't cheap. So I have a new connector body here. So the green wire goes on top, blue goes on the bottom. Your body's on, so let's get this opened up a little bit. So I can naturally went, you can't see what I'm doing, naturally went under the tube and came in through the grommet. So, put it into the grommet here. Just like so. Now all of this stuff should run under all of the other stuffs. And by other stuffs, I mean uh, starter wire fuel lines, lower cover bracket, everything. Okay, now we need to get the electronics box off so we can install our harness inside of it. So I'm going to pop the cover off, undo the mounting bolts on this, slide it out a little bit, wiggle that thing through its little holes, put this back together, and hope we don't run into any problems. Now, from what I remember, it's a tight fit, but we'll see how it goes. So this is held in with a 7 16th screw down here and then a 9 16 I think, screw right there. So I'm going to pull those out and drop this box down. Screws are out. We can now wiggle this around a little bit, which should be all we need. Alright, now we got to fish our wiring through our open slot here. A little hard to see what I'm doing, I apologize. So I'm going to run the trim switch wiring through the back side of it. Now the harness I'm using here is a little different than the way it should be. It shouldn't be mounted up top like mine is. It should be coming out of this loom and thus going straight down. Since this is a little different setup than what's supposed to be in here, I'm going to have to make do with this. Which, there's plenty of room over here, so I don't really think it'll be a problem at all. Now, this box, a little harder to get in. I need a little more room. Yeah, let's do it. Pretty much in there and ready to go. This thing is a little hard to get in. 
fits in on a weird sideways angle. Trim switch wiring is hanging out on the outside. I'm going to force that back inside so it comes out through the back. Does that make sense? Alright, trim switch wiring is out. So I'm going to loop that down so it comes out the bottom. Between all my old safety cables. And it's now just running down and doing whatever it does. So we have this wire, which is for it too. This is a red with blue purple stripe. I'm going to run that back inside for a little box. We need that. And then we have another one. Make sure that stays inside too. And that really is probably it for the routing anyway. So the, let's call it the short ground, is right here. This black wire, oh sorry, this black wire right here. It's looping around all these other wires, so it's got to kind of go out and kind of come back in. So it's got to go under so we have enough room to be able to connect it to the ground strap. Now really, you probably could just tie it into another ground somewhere else like where this little box is going to screw down to. But I want to get this as close as possible to being correct. So, put that back in. And now we should have enough room. So this terminal is our ground. That's where we're going to add our two ground wires to. So our grounds are now attached. Alright, so new plan for attaching our shorter ground. Now, by shorter, I mean the bottom one here. It doesn't have quite enough room to go to our top uh, terminal block, but not a big deal. Nothing we can't uh, make shift. Now, it will fit. It's just too tight for my liking. So I'm going to do something a little different and use the box as a ground and tap into that. So if we don't have a direction, whether it be up or down, it's probably going to be our ground screw. Problem. I mean, that's probably our problem. So this is a simple number 10 screw, I believe it's 3 quarters inch long. And it should slash will fit right in to this box here. So our main wire going to this, might as well get that routed. It's going to go under the lower motor mount, under all the cables and everything. Now, I need to get another screw for the bottom relay mount. Hold that in and install some relays and that uh, got almost done for our electro box. Now we have two red wires left over, these two guys. They need to attach to this wire. This is a fused positive. Each one of these, one leads to the controller to activate the tilt and trim switch, and the other one activates the engine mounted tilt trim switch. So both are a little on the important side. This wire is coming on a pretty extreme bend, 
So if I uh, have any problems, I'll switch that out, but I think it'll work. I removed the relays out of here just to make sure that they're not going to be in the way or anything, so put them back in now. These are the original relays. They're pretty old. But when I hooked them up, they worked, so I'll keep using them. Well, it's a buttload of wires in here now. Hopefully it fits okay. I think it will. So let's uh, hook, screw this box back down and you know, take it from there. Alright, box is reattached. So, now the moment find out if we have too much stuff going on or if my wire routing is just horrible. And that's going to be if our box goes back on okay. First plan of attack didn't work at all. Second plan is to use some zip ties to fish it through. I think that'll work. Oh, I thought I'd be able to get my hand in there too and that didn't work, but you know, let's, let's try this. See my plan? Pull, you know? Might work. And just so we all know, this would fit fine if I didn't put the battery cables in through here. Usually the battery cable comes up through the top of this thing, but I didn't want to do that because I wanted it down lower for a little sleeker design. And uh, now that I'm trying to put power trim and tilt on this motor, I can see the errors in my ways. All right, I've made up my improvised ground wire. That is this thing, probably too long. Um, I forgot where I got the white wire out of, so I'm gonna be hooking up our power trim harness here. And then just looking. So white is right there, black is gonna be on the other side. So I need to find somewhere to put this to force that pin in. Looks like right there will work. Right there. Now for my ground wire. And our harness can be plugged in. So I'm going to route these up to the top here. I want it to use the same ground as the battery ground. Now, that's not where it's supposed to go. Can you see it? It's supposed to go on this bolt right here. Right there. That one. See the little pin stop? It's supposed to go there. Um, I don't want to risk taking that out in case it breaks, so I don't want to tap into that, so I'm not going to. I'm going to share the battery ground, which is right there. Nice, easy to get to. It's not going to break off on me. And really, that, it's a good idea, I think. Now we need to attach this red wire. That's going to feed the relays that are going to go into our electrical box. Well, now the only real thing to do is pull off this uh, block off plate and install our uh, trim switch. And that screw is tiny. There's our trim tab block off. And our backing screw. Here's our tilt trim switch. 
this nut's kind of a pain. Get the wires through one at a time. It's annoying. Well, we got some gunk in our uh, crevice there. I'm going to clean that up. Alright, now we'll install our switch. Just like the nut, one wire at a time. Put our nut back on. Now hopefully I get this going the right way. If not, I'll switch it around real quick. So red goes to red, green to green, blue to blue. Pretty simple. All right, now we'll hook up the power and see what we got. There he's hooked up. Yeah, I got the switch backwards. Knew that was coming though. Now let's try. Oh, look at that. Now I'll plug in the remote harness. This is the harness that would run to the controller. So I got a piece of wire. How this works is red is coming off the battery, and you got a blue and a green which will control the direction. So you hook up a red. Ah, love it. Okay, let's try it out. Well, that works perfectly. All right, I got one last thing to do on the power trim and tilt swap here, and that is to remove the old ground strap from the bottom down here. It's, it's done now. Now one nice thing, now that the uh, trim unit works, you can pretty much angle this however you want it to get it to easily install back onto wherever you're putting it. So that's kind of nice. Well, as you can see, it's looking and working good. So, not, not really. Not too bad. I like it. I really do. It's a nice little addition. Now, do you need power trim and tilt? No, not at all. Is it handy? Extremely. So, I run my boat in the river. It's a lot of shallow spots, and when you want to get in and out of the boat, there is no dock. You run it up on the beach. Power trim and tilt is extremely handy when you have to do that. You don't have to get up. You don't have to go to the back of the boat. You don't have to release the engine so you don't hit anything. It's, it really is really the way to go if you're using it in a river. And I am, so granted I didn't need it, but sure makes life easy. Hope you uh, enjoyed the video.